Look at what we have found at Cul-de-Sac Crossing. I didn't expect to actually still see them. I thought they'd gone wandering off. The zebra have disappeared, but we do have three lionesses of, I think, the Paradise Pride. But what's been entertaining us over the last few minutes is something is seriously upsetting this lioness in the middle. We can't quite work it out. Brent suspects that she's sitting on a wasp's nest. I think he could be right, actually. Oh, girl. She has been snapping at her... Either that or she's got a, a restless tail or something that's driving her mad. But something is causing seriously discomforted behavior from her. And, of course, now I've mentioned that she stopped because... No, she's still thrashing her tail. Initially, when she was first up, she was actually biting and snapping at the air around her. So I'm, I think a beehive or a wasp hive is not a bad idea. Or not a bad suggestion. Although I suspect at this point she probably would have moved. Or you'd think she would have anyway. What do you think, girl? You can see how well these lions conceal themselves in these croton thickets around the crossing. So if we have a look, just to give you a little bit of context. Oh, where'd number three go? Oh, snapping at something again. Where'd number three go? She must have ducked further in. Or she's... No, she wouldn't go for a drink there. All right, so to give you some context, this is the Mara River. Down that way is the Mara North Crossing. And then at Dusty... Cr oh, sorry, at Cul-de-Sac Crossing, this is where the wildebeest will come across around here. So they'll come across down this side and then in front of us here. You can see why it works as, there we go, that's one of their favorite crossing points. You can see why it works as such a convenient ambush point for the lionesses. All they've got to do is wait until a couple of thousand wildebeest gather together and they can use these slightly eroded banks to cover themselves. But you're up now. Ali, absolutely. Remember I said I don't think she's going to go down and drink there? Absolutely. A croc does not differentiate between a lion, a wildebeest, a zebra, um, or a human being. There is no distinction made, and it absolutely would go for a lion. It would eat a lion without any second thoughts, uh, but obviously one of the larger ones. And that's why if you watch lions when they go down to drink, and it's something that we saw Karula do back on Juma, you'll actually see them hissing at the crocodiles and hissing at the water occasionally if you can't see the crocodiles and a couple of nights ago during one of our many long nights many all nights anyway i was with the purungat pride right down south and the lionesses took the cubs to have a drink in the mara river and it was a, it was astounding to watch how cautiously they made their way to the water's edge they obviously are very well aware of the risks that line looks fat and happy. Let's have a look. You don't look like you're going to eat anything, girl. Sorry if anyone got a bit motion sick there. Panting away. A time of plenty for lionesses. I agree with James. I don't think that these lionesses struggle that much when the migration isn't here. But it just does make things so terribly easy. Our C Nack, you would like to know if we've seen any animals attacking or any predators attacking the animals during the migration. Lots, lots and lots. I mean, we've seen many a crocodile take down during the river crossings. We've seen lionesses catch the wildebeest while they're dashing away from the crocodiles. We've seen lionesses catch zebra from the balloon. Uh, through our many long evenings, we've seen Scots had countless cheetah hunts for, uh, with them tracking down and catching baby wildebeest and even adult wildebeest and many, many a wildebeest lion hunt, which is always an interesting situation to experience in the pitch black because you've got to try and figure out where to put yourself so that you actually get them because the mad panic as the wildebeest dash off makes it very difficult to actually figure out exactly what's a lioness and what's a wildebeest. But we have. The migration has been the height of action. Aaron, hmm, 
who would like to know what my favorite part of the migration is? Aaron, the odd occasion where you are able to nap, if you find yourself sitting next to full lions, it's sort of one o'clock in the morning. Uh, my favorite part is the meh, 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 meh. And then the occasional change in tempo as a, as a male wildebeest gets it into his head that a female might potentially be interested in him and proceeds to chase her. So that's been one of my favorites, I would say, the noise. Uh, while our cat seems to be prevented by, from sleeping by her tail, let's go back to Byron, who's got some dogs who aren't so troubled.